In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Our current AD must have a very low opinion of the subjects in his kingdom, for he assumes that we are resigned to his regressive vision for the future of Illini football. Perhaps he's right. There's an outcry in places like Michigan and Notre Dame, where stupefying ineptitude is met with derision and revulsion. Low expectation aside, this sordid ordeal surrounding our current head coach and his apologist A.D. reminds me of George Orwell's Animal Farm, where all pigs are created equal, except some are more equal than others. The voice of the nation has either fallen on the deaf ears of its leader or not deemed relevant or meaningful to the conversation because we lack the right or requisite knowledge to add or detract from the conversation. Are we conditioned to merely follow those that lead us regardless of the direction or wisdom of the path or message? If this be true, why not the lemming is our new symbol or mascot? Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off the cliff we go. Should anyone harbor doubts that we are led by an incompetent head coach who has perfected the art of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory and rendered it into an art form? Does the Northwestern roster have a single wide receiver who would have been recruited by our staff and yet appeared that all were the second coming of Wes Walker as they merrily ran free amongst our four stars? It's hard to argue the fact that Northwestern is better coached and less talented at virtually every position on the field. Ron Zook correctly identified this game as our most important rivalry and privately told those in his inner circle that he was nervous about facing Northwestern and more confident relative to Cincy. Losing four or five matchups with your chief rival gets you fired at most places unless you live in the land of the blind where only the one-eyed king can see the truth. Clearly it made sense to bench Charest and Lashore for McGee and Dufresne in the third quarter. Surely one could see that our coaches completely outfoxed their counterparts with their wily halftime adjustments that lulled even the most astute of our enemies into a state of complacency that all but assured us of a last-second victory that was unjustly robbed from us by a worldwide zebra conspiracy. Anyone could see the genius of our leadership and recognize the guile and cunning of our strategy. Statistics, lies, and damn lies tell a different story as we're 11th in points per game, 10th in total yards, 10th in penalty yards, 11th in TDs, 11th in interceptions, 10th in sacks, 11th in punt returns, and 10th in kick returns in a lousy Big Ten conference. Or maybe, just maybe, this is another brilliant maneuver meant to confuse our enemies and befuddle our otherwise clueless fan base. How clever can one be that our head coach has again, with the help and support of His Majesty, the AD, managed to artfully outwit the entire college football world and disguise our superiority by feigning utter and unmitigated incompetence. Long live the King. May his gesture continue to serve as we applaud his skill and struggle to understand the source and complexity of his unique and superior ways. I'm assuming it's still dark, or can you see your thing? Maybe it's a recorder.